And welcome to a live stream. Hello. Probably the first and only live stream of the year. Uh, we're getting ready for the first round final teams where we actually get to lock in all our players and the year gets underway. And joining me, of course, is Eno. Mate, how are you going? Good, mate. Good. Ah, it was good to have footy back. Obviously, disappointing loss in the end, as we're looking at here on the screen. But a bit to talk about. Gibkiss, the main one, of course. Devastating. Uh, it's just um, sad stuff. Seeing him go down after the year he had last year. It's going to yeah. be, what, two years out of the game now. So um, I guess the only thing is we'll be able to start him next year if he's all good for, you know, bottom price. So, yeah, um, I mean, it sucks for us. Just, we're, just we're in trouble. Fair. Yeah. Just not fair. Um, uh, yeah. It's good to have the footy back. So, nah, a bit to talk about. And then, uh, yeah, hopefully with the teams we get some more info we're still waiting on, you know. Um, a lot of teams, I guess. Frio with Jackson and, and the Ruck situation there. Uh, Marty Hawes popped up last night. So we'll yep, see. He has. We need to figure out what the D's are doing there and whether, you know, we think it's okay to go with him this week or wait on. So we'll find out. Yes, lots of good stuff to happen at five o'clock as well. Yeah, very curious to see how that D's team lands for sure, as well as the Cats as well, what they do with the Manor. I think they're probably the two biggest question marks. But we've got, what, half an hour before the teams drop. So two yep. agenda items, one. Let's uh, cover last night's game, talk all about it. And then secondly, we'll get to any questions, any Q&A uh, from the chat um, before we hit five o'clock as well. All right. So last night, firstly, pretty impressed by the Tigers. Honestly, after last week, I thought we'd get a response, but very competitive. And I must be said, without the injuries, I, I think I'd have them probably getting over the line. Uh, but losing, what, two of your tall defenders in Gibkiss and Young, uh, being forced to put Volta back, who was effectively your, your most damaging forward up the ground to that point in the game, you know, that 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 really hurts. It's hard to recover. And, of course, losing Prestia early as well. So, you know, you, ha you had basically from half time was it more or less um, two down on the bench. So to be in it and uh, almost win it, I think, was a very gallant effort. And given where Tigers are at, I think moral victories aren't too bad, given that it'll help with the picks at the end. I'm sure you'd rather have taken the chocolates, especially against uh, the Blues in the opener. but all things considered, probably not the worst result in the world. Uh, from the Tiger side, I guess, who are you impressed with? Um, yeah, Bol Bolter, honestly, you said it. He was unbelievable. So having to move him, I mean, he still played well down back, but it just late in the game, you could see, you know, if Lynch took a mark up the ground, it was there was nowhere to go inside 50. And um, guys like Shea, you know, he had a poor game. We needed him to step up, especially in forward 50, and he was, he was mm. pretty terrible. So. Um, yeah, as you said, it was a good effort, but um, I mean, as and like far Dusty, as... Dusty was all right, but it's not it like okay. Dusty five he years ago. Like, he was yeah. just a good player. He wasn't, you know, uh, someone taking over the game. Yeah, he finished off some chances, but he, he did fade in and out of the game. You know, he had good moments, but um, I guess it's his first run, you know, um, since a couple of weeks ago in a preseason or whatever. So, um, I mean, look, we haven't really been fantasy or super coach relevant, and I think that hasn't really changed a whole lot <laughs> as of yet yeah. anyway. Um, I, I know a few people went with Shorty who, um, I mean, he was quiet in a lot of the game, but then had these little patches where he'd, he'd um, collect some footy, obviously kicked that really nice goal. But um, his tog was relatively low, especially in a game where we had a lot of players out. Um, yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah. and to only yeah. uh, score the 88 with that goal as well is, um, you know, well under what you'd expect for him normally. Yeah. Uh, putting you on the spot here, but have you seen kick-in numbers? Do you know how many he got? <laughs> Because you know, just looking but I had at the feeling, scores, lost we were watching, and I think right you know, Hammy, Hammy owns him. And there was a period where I think Carlton kicked like four or five points in a row. He was on the bench. So, look, they're still going to get shared. I don't think he's going to have like a full monopoly. Um, I think if he's on the ground and close, we want it to be him because he's, he's the best kick. But um, you know, Vlosten takes him, Rioli takes him. So um, I think. I don't know. I'll look at the numbers now. I don't think they would have been too good for him because, as I said, um, I feel like when Carlton kicked a lot of points, he was off the field. So not much you can do. Look, I wouldn't panic. If you have short air, I wouldn't panic. Um, he still had eight. There you go. Of um, What's that? 15. So, oh, no, that's last okay, week. That's, I haven't, that's exactly, not yeah, that's yet. Awesome. Yeah, anyway, yeah. yeah, look, I wouldn't worry. I wouldn't worry. He's going to be – he's the number one um, option. Yep. But I think, just think he yeah, found himself off the field in times when they were available. So – no, nah, I mean, maybe there's a slight worry about um, 
his role with Uze. Like it might not be the same as Dimmer. Like I don't know. I I, I didn't want to go there just because of uncertainty in the buy as well to start the season. But if you did, I wouldn't be jumping off obviously uh, until he's buy. You just hold through, see what happens, and then reassess then. Uh, and then two other questions then, and we'll move on to the blue side quickly before jumping into some of this Q&A. So Seth Campbell, you know, a decent chunk uh, took him on. Not as big a performance last week, and he's scoring somewhat saved by a, a pretty nice goal in the fourth quarter there. Just the 31 super coach, do you think he's at risk of, you know, losing his spot or potentially ending up as the sub with Mansell playing well? I know it's a tricky situation because you've also got three injuries to replace as well, right? Yeah. But they're not in the in the forward line. So how do you no, see that kind so- of playing out? Maybe if he didn't have any injuries, I'd say it could be risky because Mansell was obviously coming off an injury. He played okay. Besides, look at that that goal he should have kicked. <laughs> mm, mm. Um, could have could have. Oh yeah, the, the poster, quite... the poster oh, where he shocking. caught uh, Williams. Shocking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think Seth gets a run. So I mean, especially with the injuries, obviously they're not direct replacements. But Prestia's, you know, uh, they could they could shuff, shovel things around. And maybe put, you know, I think Bakes had more mid time in the second half. Than what he was getting, you know, he's an option. I think he needs to be in the midfield. Um, uh, so with Prestia out, who knows how long it is? But um, like I said last night, footy's not back until uh, I see Prestia in a red vest. So um, lovely. <laughs> look, I think he's safe for now. It's just more his scoring I'd be worried about. Um, he still actually managed forty-eight dream team. He just had seven clangers. So I don't know. Again, he's he's just that type of player. Small forward can fade in, fade out. Get if he takes his opportunities, maybe he. Spikes another 70 like he did last week. But, um, yeah, I wasn't keen on going him because of, like, the Mansell thing. And when I found out he was mm. sub, knowing that he might be not too far away or, like, a poor game away from getting dropped. And I think someone said uh, they had a VFL practice before the game against Carlton at Punt Road and um, Judson Clark was, like, best on or whatever. Uh, so who, who knows? I don't know. I th- He might stay in yeah. for now. I wouldn't be getting him in if you don't have him. And then, obviously, you just wait and see what happens if you've got him. Just, yep. just see what happens. Yep. Uh, and then just quickly with those two keys going down, uh, do Tigers have any like rookies or anything like that? We should be any names we should be kind of keeping an eye out for. Cause the only other thing I could really think of is like, if they're committed to bolter back, it's not like you have great um, tall stocks either. Right. So could we see Naismith coming in and kind of playing key forward relief rock? Yeah. I think that's the question. People want to know if Naismith might get in. I, I don't think he should. Um, it's just, if Nank can, you know, is fit enough, can shoulder the ruck load. I want him in there. He was really good last night, uh, and neither of them are much of a good forward. So I, I see two options. I see um, Ben Miller coming in. He's versatile player, not a very good player, but versatile enough. He can play forward or back. So mm. do we bring him in, play him back, um, and just play a bit tall? You know, have Broad and Lost and play a bit taller, depending on who we're playing, um, and keep Bolter forward because I mean he was close to best on ground, probably for three quarters. Um, so I would like to keep him up forward. And then the other option is keeping him down back, of course, and getting like Cozzy back in the team or Samson Ryan. And yeah, I'd much less like that option, but I guess it depends what, you know, it's Robin Peter to pay Paul. You, you wish you had two Noel Bolters because, um, yep, you could do a roll at both ends. But yeah, so that's either, I don't think any rookie comes in or young player that I know of that's ready yet. Uh, and look, young won't be... Uh, uh, you know, he'll miss one game if it all goes yeah, well. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. It's yeah. just concussion. So, yeah, so that's I think, fair enough. Yeah. Don't worry too much about that. Yeah. All right. Moving on to the Carlton side, uh, there's, I think, two really big players to talk about in terms of ownership, uh, which is Williams and Carroll. Uh, I mean, Williams is obviously the highly owned one there with, I think, over 60% of the comp having him. Uh, pretty disappointing fantasy super coach ratio again, um, which is, you know, not good to see. And function, I think, uh, a little bit of the fact that he hasn't been the most efficient with his use for sure, but we've seen two weeks in a row now. He's played three quarters and then faded in the fourth. Carlton's been in close games and then he's lost scaling, you know, 10, 15 points of scaling, it feels like, uh, in that last term. So, you look, still building his fitness. 51's not what we're hoping for, but I, I think uh, I got the confidence to stick with him and, and keep him on field once uh, once uh, he comes off his bye. Um, how are you feeling about Zach Williams after what you've seen two, through two weeks? Same thing as last week. Hey, just rinse and repeat. Good for two and a half quarters. Faded out again and just... You know, we were watching just some acts that lost him points, right? Like last week, he gave away 50, sort of cooked, you know, cooked his score at the end uh, in a close game. 
and went from like 80 down to 70. And then this week, I think it was his third quarter. I think he still had 20 fantasy in that quarter, but he only mm. scored about five super coach from it because not much of it yep. was good. So oh, I'm there not, was some unfortunate yeah, stuff as well. Like he was kicking the ball along the ground, like little squirrely yeah. ones just to keep it away. And it was good yeah. from an actual football sense, but didn't work out from a super coach sense. No, And yeah, no. he had a couple of unfortunate things. Well, the second week in a row where he's earned a free kick and I think McGarv or someone else yeah. has run off with it. That stuff and he also, yeah, he yeah. also had another um, possession that was taken back because of a free kick that someone else gave away as well. So just, you know, a few yeah. things like that that go the other way. And all of a sudden think- he's on 80, especially if he can run out game. So I think, I think I'm still pretty confident with this pick. Yeah, I will keep, obviously keep him and hope you know hope he's better for the run. But if Gov's playing like this and doesn't get you know is healthy, um, then it then it'll obviously detract because you know there's still Newman down there. Assad obviously plays some more defensive roles at times. But yeah, if Gov's if I think if Gov stays fit, it might you know hurt him a bit. And he takes some kick ins as well. True. Yeah. There's a yeah, few Gov's mouths down real. there, but yeah, we're not we're, we're holding fire and um, they get the buy obviously this week. So maybe post buy he, he looks uh, and and plays a lot better deeper into games hopefully yep. and then uh carol's the other one just wanted to touch on before we jump into this q a uh so 74 backed up his 65 last week which was what just from one half as the sub so two good scores from him back to back for his 124k price tag and looking like the rookie that um many of us missed i think fortunately we were doing a bit of brainstorming last night before the game and decided that going lazaro to uh carol and whoever had the cash yeah, yeah ended up making sense because we weren't really sure on this last rookie spot that we had in a lot of our teams, but it actually kind of made sense to go Carroll because one, he had the upside given that he'd had a CBA role the week before and Doherty was now missing and they hadn't brought in another mid. And then secondly, uh, we can loophole him next week with, you know, McKercher, Roberts, and a lot of us have got one of these guys on the bench. So it kind of was like, oh, well, if we're going to hop, you know, take a punt on someone for two weeks and then you know, potential travel. At least yeah. we've seen that he can score with the role. If he continues it, great. But um, it may not be there when he comes back from by. So it looks good now, but I still think the risk that, you know, Walsh returns, which we, we don't know one way or the other. Um, we've got, yeah, Elijah Holland's coming back as well, which probably knocks someone else out. But there's a few things in that team that can eventually, uh, you know, potentially affect him. I think positives is I actually liked Kennedy in the forward, half forward role. And it feels like that'd be someone that would be competing with Carroll for his spot. Uh, Carroll didn't yeah. do much when he went forward. He disappeared, but I thought he was, very productive in the midfield when he got time. And really the only thing holding his score back from being bigger is that he had, I think, a couple of un- quite unlucky bench stints. He ha- he started on the bench and then had the last five to six minutes on the bench in the first quarter. So he ended up with like 50% tog and was kind of um, fighting a little bit of an uphill battle then. But yeah, second and third quarters, very productive and overall liked his game for where he's at. So as long as, you know, um, uh, Walsh isn't coming back anytime soon, he, he looks be likely to hold that fourth CBA spot. And I think he had something like 14 of, I don't know if it was like 32 or something CBA. So just under half, but, you know, really nice for uh, a rookie. So one that people be, should be keeping their eye on if they don't have to bring into their side after his, by assuming the spot holds, Walsh isn't back and all that good stuff. Anything else to add? No, I just thought Carol, yeah, he worked into the game nicely. I'm just looking at like by quarter, you can click these fantasy by yeah, quarter. Yeah, like yeah. these fantasy by quarter. Let's have a look. Yeah, he just the second quarter. You know, that first, it's just that first mm-hmm. quarter, really. Um, yeah, just as he said, start on the bench, um, played a bit mid, and then went straight to the half forward, and then back to the bench. So he just didn't work into it. But after that, his next three quarters are good, and he ran out the game well. Um, yeah, no, I, I like him. Um, I think. And this is what we're talking Walsh about. Walsh is a hard one to Williams read. Yeah, as well. yeah, yeah. I think he looks exactly yep. the same as last week with Williams. Um, yeah, well, it's hard to read with Walshie, but I'm just happy we've got him because it kind of makes it a hard call if you don't have him. I guess you just have to bring him in regardless. Um, but the fact that we've started with him, and if anyone else did, you can, uh, you, you know, you're not wasting a trade bringing someone in that might then die pretty quickly if Walsh is back or, you know, and his role regresses. You know, it's just whatever. We, we cash him in for whatever he gets to, and, and hopefully it's quite a bit. So we'll see. Uh, and then one actual very final thing. I know we're going to get questions about this, but uh, Harry Mackay has now had a couple of big scores back to back and he's got North, I think, coming off the bye. So do we trade into Harry Mackay is going to be a conversation that we'll pick up over the next couple of weeks. There's, I think there's a lot to play out before we look into that. He's pr- still priced at like, I think, high 300s, like 390 or low 400, something like that. Yeah, um, so you are something. kind of going to be banking on him going large again to actually get a good price rise before moving off him. 
Uh, so we'll, we'll just monitor. But like if a Heaney or a Flanders or a Jackson, if you start one of those and I don't pan it, I could potentially, you know, um, see people jumping on for a game or two for a quick price rise. And we'll see exactly just how good or bad North is over the next couple of weeks as well. And I think that'll give us an indication of whether they are this big purple plus matchup that people think they're going to be. So, um, yep. yes, expect more Harry Mackay conversation to come over the next two weeks, unfortunately, whether you like it or not. <laughs> now, let's jump into some questions. Uh, where have we got the first one here? HTC, hey, boys, if you do decide, would you rather Lazara and McKercher or James Jordan and Cadman? That's a ripping, difficult question straight off the bat. Straight off the bat, yeah. Um, I think Jordan and Cadman, but... <sighs> I don't so know I'm not in favor. Of, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've got three <laughs> of the four. Lazaro is the one that I don't have at the moment, and I don't even mind him. Like if I had the cash uh, and didn't have all these other other rookies locked in, I, I might have him. But I prefer Cadman to Lazaro anyway. Uh, and James Jordan, I like as an on-field option. McKercher sitting on my bench, so I guess I'd probably go Jordan and Cadman if I had to pick two. But yeah, it's a toss-up. I'd be finding a way to get all of McKercher, uh, Jordan, and Cadman into my side. McKercher to bury any good. Eno, this has been a hot topic in uh, <laughs> the the deep recesses of the Discord today with George, the very man himself. Today? Um, <laughs> uh, I mean, the weeks we've been dealing with this, pumping up uh, Barry. And he's been looking for a reason to get rid of McKercher, uh, which I, I just don't see as a good move. I'm still pretty confident in McKercher. They're, they're trying to dig up anything they can, you know, uh, have, have Instagram, you wait, whatever. What, sorry? Have you seen he has no McKercher and has Sanders on the bench because of what he's done just to get Barry in? So, oh, man. Oh, look, I think both can be good, right? McKercher, obviously, we're going to have to wait and see. I'm really curious on the North lineup. You know, I don't believe team sheets and where people are named too often, but looking at it, um, is she's going to be playing midfield, you know, this week? Is he going to mm-hmm. rotate mm-hmm. between midfield and halfback? Could it be like a thing where, you know, McKercher and him sort of rotate? I don't know because... Yeah, I just don't know enough about North to know what they they might do. So um, if that's a case and she's was playing more in the guts, well, then, you know, wheels up for, for Colby and Fisher down back, obviously. So you'd want all of them, really. Um, yep. You could maybe question Sheasel. But, yeah, so yeah, I don't know. That's my opinion on that. With but, that yeah. North side is that they've brought in Gota, who's another halfback, and then they dropped Phillips. So it does, to me, feel like Sheasel could be pushed up more onto the ball this week and you have McKercher... Uh, Fisher mm-hmm. as the one two one two. She's occasionally coming back. You've got Goda back there as well. So yeah, really interesting one to see how that plays out. But I, I just can't see a world where I don't start McKercher. Uh, yeah. And I'm not like Barry's playing half forward for a high stoppage team, and he we know he's tackling numbers. It's like there's potential there. There's good uh, things think, Barry. Yeah, yeah. But I, I think McKercher is probably where I'd start and hold the cash. And if you need to correct to Barry, do so. But I think of these two, McKercher's more likely to be successful. So that's where I'd start. Uh, Bolter would have been absolutely exhausted being swapped around. Like, it didn't look like it. The guy's a bit of a freak, I must say. He definitely has the yeah. athleticism on show. Uh, Sharp or where for bench? Bit of a tricky question here. So, um, Sharp, we know, is best 18 because he's been moved on to the ground for Amira, who's been a late withdrawal. Is that still the case once he comes back? Was he going to be the sub or, you know, on the bench this week? Hard to say. And then where has, I guess, survived a couple of the big returns from Maybe. GWS? Maybe. could sub, be right? the sub. He could be the sub. So let's have a look at this. Team. I think he will be the subware. And look, I'm guessing with, with 14 minutes before we find out. So um, that's no, 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 no. you don't find out till the hour before the game. But I think he's sub. Look, Finn's back I mean, on the it wing. Could be, could be Thomas. Perryman back. Yeah, it could be. It's him or Thomas. But I think because Thomas plays a forward role, um, mm. he might be. There. I don't know. Look, I'd say Sharp at this point. It's uh, true because they've got. Yeah, if Ware's playing wing and they've got O'Halloran. But and- Callahan, Perryman, Ash in the side. It does seem hard to understand where. Look, I definitely wouldn't in. pick where. Like, just I mean, you can you can and, and adjust once we do find out. But either way, I don't think I would. And Sharp still, like I'd say, Sharp at this point. But as you said, is he locked on? Like locked in? I don't know. So Amir is um, out, and that's where Sharp's now. So they've got MJ Sharp. So Young's obviously playing. I think. Yeah. I mean, we'll find out. Cox, I think, is playing like more a forward role. Then it's probably Erasmus, maybe. Erasmus, with, yep. And then is Warner their seventh defender there? I don't, I don't know. Could be. All right. Uh, so tricky. I, I don't think either of the Neither job security is, what is I would say. great. 
but uh, if I had to pick one, I'm probably still leaning to sharp over where. But yeah, that's a tricky one. I mean, that that feels like the type of um, rookie that ends up being Carol, being Carol, Carol, anyway. Carol, and that's yeah. what, that's why we were like, oh, let's just start <laughs> Carol because like we're gonna we're gonna miss one of these. Like, let's just yeah, we know he's start playing. him and yeah. we'll, we'll correct later. Uh, what happened with uh, Chera's low score so far? Thought he'd be scoring well and can and considered him off his buy. Yeah, I, I don't know. Like it, it was one that I was thinking of during the game because Chera looked very promising towards the back end of last year, and you thought he might just carry that on this year. He's got the CBAs still right up there, but uh, has not been able to convert that into big scores. Yeah, I don't know. I think he had like five touches at half time, which was weird. But I think in the second half he pulled it back and and scored he quite still well. Had Fifteen for the game, which is incredibly low. Yeah, it is very strange. Um, I I wouldn't read into it too much. He's not a little classic pick anyway. So um, yeah, if you've got him in draft, just cross your fingers that he turns it around. Because yeah. I, I don't, yeah, I wouldn't consider him. And he obviously can't now with these scores in his system. Yeah, exactly. Just wait until he bottoms out and if something changes, have a look then. All right, Lions looks like going 90 minimum this week and can be used next week as a mid-loop for two shots. Uh, for those that don't have Carroll, otherwise it's it's somewhat uh, redundant uh, or like your Tom Green or something like that. Oh, wait, no, that's the wrong way. Next, next um, week, yeah. yeah. So is the short-term sugar hit worth the risk or wait until the round three bubble Lions play first round four? So yeah, this is one, another one we're looking at last night of do you put Lions in? And I definitely think I prefer the the chance at Lions over Barry because we know Lions can, I mean, he's done 110 plus in the past, but even with where he's at in his career, I think 90, 90 plus is very safe as long as he has the job security. The problem is he played like eight games last year and never more than two consecutively. And that was with Ashcroft out. So uh, what his job security looks like going forward is the thing that's most up in the air with me. Um, especially once Dev Rob's back and gets a bit of fitness. I know he's named this week, but I'm not sure if he actually makes the team or if he ends up being sub. Could be um, sub. And then Neil's back pretty almost, yeah, exactly. like almost definitely like, yeah. is what they're but, I mean, he was named but... with Neil, so I'm trying not to weigh into that too much unless they did that knowing that... Um... Anyway. So, uh, yeah, I, to be honest, I, how many... The, the question for me, you know, is how many weeks of him going 90 do you need for him to be worthwhile? So he'll play this week. Assume he goes 90. Let's just assume the scoring's fine. He goes 90 this week. How many more weeks after he hits the bubble does he need to, to be worthwhile? Is it like two games, three games to have it's probably like enough three, cash and put enough points on the field? And three, yeah, maybe so four. You, so. so if you're going like, what's the likelihood he plays the next five games? I just don't think it's that high, um, which is why like I'd rather not go him. Um, the you know, there's enough other value in the midfields anyway. I think the challenge is that uh, if I don't go him now and he scores well and then he's named off the bubble, How can I bring him to? in? Yeah. yeah. You've already kind of committed to fading him at that point. So if you do like Lions and you've just got a good gut that he's actually going to get a good run of games this year, I think start him. Um, but I'm probably leaning towards him not playing enough games to be worthwhile or being put into a sub vest or something funny like that. But it could go the other the other way where you know, Lions cop another the injury tonight. Nice. And then, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, thoughts on Libba. That's also been one that's been discussed today. So Libba is 32 this year and coming off a career best year where he scored 10 higher than he has in the, the, his previous three uh, on the back of the dogs being number one and number two stoppage side uh, for the year. So to me, there are like three obvious signs of regression, age, career best year, um, dogs already being most stoppages on the plus side with him. There's not a ton of others that I love in the range in terms of like, I'm confident their role exists and the opportunity exists. And Libba does have those. I think this is like yeah. don't have a buy and their fixtures good. So I can see why some people are leaning into that safety. And I totally get that. Um, yeah. McRae still coming off that hammy. Bazalenka's not there this year. So really it's just Sanders coming in to take some mid time and harms. So I'm not really worried about. So, uh, yeah, personally, not for me because I'm looking for guys with more upside, uh, but I can see why people are interested in the pick. Yeah, I don't need to add any more to that. All right, with Husway being out, I've done a shuffle and got Dempsey in the forward line. Not sure if this is rogue or I'm blinded by being a Cats fan. And I think you've had a couple of looks at Dempsey, haven't you? Yeah, he's, he's in my team. So, Oh, there uh, you go. I, I did some searching, uh, George style on big footy and read some like found some articles and stuff and coaches comments on Dempsey. They seem to love him. So did I you think check he's... to see if he's got any tattoos? 
uh, what's his vaccination no, I, status? He, I think he, <laughs> has he been taking uh, gut gut bacteria, <laughs> you know, probiotics? Has he gone to Turkey yet? I'm not sure. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, like I did watch Chris Scott's press uh, from yesterday as well. Like he said, all the kids playing him, Clark, and then Manor, who I believe will be the sub. Not that I know yet. Um, yeah, uh, like that's the, their that's spot. The, he said that's the inside word. Yeah, like this is paraphrasing, but he said, you know, we're not hand, we're not just handing out kids games because we're in this period or whatever. Like these guys have earned their spot over their pre seasons, and or even you know, a couple of them being there, um, like Dempsey for a couple of years, he's had to earn his spot, and we're not just they, you know these aren't handed. He's like, we only have a couple of injuries, um, and and they've earned the spot in our best twenty three. Um, through their form. So, look, Chris Scott, you know, is uh, probably the coach that gives away the least, but um, there was other comments from Lappin as well who um, just said he's one of the great workers, runners at the club. Um, I think he's going to play sort of more of like a high half forward role, can get up the ground, was impressive in preseason against your boys, I think. So, look, he's one you can take a risk on. There's no, obviously, guarantee it works, but I think... Out of the forward options, you know, he might be he might be one of the better ones because, you know, a lot of the good rookies are elsewhere on the field as far as job security and stuff. But down forward, besides like a Wilson, you know what we got Cadman, who I'm taking a risk on as well, and then Dempsey or Buku or, you know, yep. Harvey Gallagher. Like, there's not, you know, I think Dempsey's probably up there. Um, so yeah, look, he's in the been in the system for a couple of years. I think he can um, take this opportunity. Yep. He's probably been waiting for it for a while. So yeah. I'm, I yeah. think it's okay. Yep. I mean, and with Rowan, you know, supposedly out for another month or something yeah, longer like yeah. that, he's got a good chance to hold down his role. Uh, so, you know, with Henry back on the side as well. So, um, yeah, man is probably the only risk there of like, you know, if he comes on and plays well, Dempsey doesn't have a good game. Is there a chance they get swapped for the next couple of weeks? I think there's a small there's chance. So, it's also, someone that sorry, but in um, oh, yeah, go, go. Oliver Henry, because he's been, I mean, look, it's probably only short term. Uh, he's like a late fitness test, I think is the word. So, yeah. look, if, if that was the case, maybe he's only one week away and he plays next week anyway, but. Yeah, yeah, that's, that makes it harder though, right? Well. Because if does, Henry's yeah. out, Mana plays, and then it's literally, I think, <laughs> whoever plays gets the role next week. So once again, the type of player I've got a keen eye on um, Dempsey because I think he could be someone that we correct to, especially like I'm starting Cadman, maybe Cadman on his buy only has one price loss, hasn't looked that good. Like Dempsey could yep. be the type of player I go to, but uh, not a smash start. All right. Um, I'm just starting to look now. We've got so like we've got like 50 questions to get through in five minutes <laughs> until team. So we've got to probably hurry this up. We can a bit. pick it up. Two players need the rundown on uh, Finn McRae and Bonner. I think Finn McRae probably starts a sub, and Tom Mitchell's coming back next week, so I wouldn't touch. And then uh, Bonner should be okay until Sinclair comes back, which sounds like next week. But then he gets pushed to third half back. Could s- still score okay in that St Kilda system where they like to chip, kick it around. Um, but we'll be behind, yeah, Sinclair and Naz. So. Uh, I, I just think we've got other more solid options in the midfield, but if you really like Bonner, you probably can start him. Can you start Jordan on the field uh, to get Sexton on field or Ford to get Robert on field? It might be Jordan in the midfield, I think. Oh, okay. So rather, would you rather start Sexton or Robert this week is the question. I think. Yeah, something like that. I mean, I'd like to start them all, um, but I think Sexton, uh, if I was choosing. Look, they both got, they got great roles. Uh, the Crom and then oh, okay. Roberts plays uh, tonight. I think I'd probably go Roberts then against Collingwood. Yeah. But yeah, it's a bit of a coin flip for me. And I'd like to get them both on field if possible. All right. Uh, Jenny and Anna, what are your thoughts on current forward rookie ranks behind Sexton and Reed? Oh, okay, we sort uh, of just. Wilson's probably, yeah, number yeah. one. And then Cadman, uh, which is like the four that I've got. Um, after that, I think it's a blanket Burgess over. And MC. Yeah. 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 And Lazaro as well would be the other one that yeah. I'd throw in there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Buku as well. Uh, keep an eye on, but yeah. Last minute league for anyone that's looking for spots 339453. Uh, thoughts on fielding Lazaro Wilson? I think Wilson, I'm more confident on field this week than Lazaro, just given the matchup against um, uh, GWS. Yep. Is Lions a good pick? We've covered that one off. Uh, do I play Roberts on field for McCurcher? I've got Roberts over McCurcher on field this week just because of matchups in both Supercoach and Fantasy Buster. Uh, Barry and Bonner, I think we've covered. Hey, boys, crouch to sheasel, crouch to sharp to shore up defense. 
uh, keep yeah keep what you have. Yeah. I think. I'd, uh, rookies over premiums for me, and I much prefer Kirch to Sharp, so I'd, I'd stay with that. Um, should I be worried about Campbell? Yeah, I mean, like you just play it by ear with what happens next week. If he gets dropped, you correct, and if not, ride a price rise and then correct him the week after. I'd say. Need to pick one of Young or Sheezer. Worried about Young starting on the bench over Brayshaw. Uh, Anno. Oh, um, that is a tough one. Uh, you've been the biggest, the hottest Sheezer fan all preseason, even before we knew he was playing at halfback. Yeah, role. now he has forty-five percent ownership, and it almost makes you want to go off him. Nah. Um, I th- look, I'm unsure because of what North are doing. So I'd still probably say Young. We know he's playing. Uh, don't, don't worry about him being on the bench over Brayshaw. Um please um he's going to be playing that that mid role so probably young because we know what role he has ahead of Sheasel and you know he's older um but i've got both so look young if i had to pick it's probably my answer cool um force trades how many will make after regular round one i would say over the first two weeks before prices rise we should be well we will be using someone between four and six trades i think there's a chance people boost this week and next week um, and I, to be honest, that's fine. Cash is king. You want to generate that value. So if you have to boost over these first two weeks, so be it. Um, but the six concussions. <laughs> but yeah. Don't say that. <laughs> uh, all right. Lions versus Berry versus Lazaro. I mean, I guess Lions, if it's going on field, if it's just bench and using the cash elsewhere, I'd probably go Lazaro. Yeah. Yeah. All right, had LDU all preseason, but after changes, Husweight has come out. I've got the cash to move LDU up to Bond. Should I do it? No. Yeah, bro. Join yeah. us, Niblo. You don't want to watch uh, that stuff without without Bond. I think um, cash in the bank could be nice this year to make corrections, but yeah, I think get Bond. Um, also, Sharp versus Dempsey. Dempsey for me. All right, have we got Sunday teams yet? And then we'll jump back into some more q and I do have a bit of a hard stop um, to go pick up my daughter from school. So, uh, oh, um, missed the first five minutes. Are we worried about Short's role in the wing round one if you own him? Just a uh, quick recap for us, I know. You worried? Uh, not worried, no. No, I don't think he played much wing either, or if any. So, no, don't stress. Tag, talk, uh, Robotum to Dacos and Finn Mag to who? I mean, I think... Pin should be going to Merritt still. I know there's a lot talked up over Martin's role, but Merritt's still the linchpin for Essendon. And uh, I think Robottom will probably stand next to Dacos at stoppages, but I don't know if he's going to hard tag him around the ground. We saw Swans win without the hard tag uh, last week, uh, you know, against that D's midfield. And uh, Pies got beaten without Dacos being tagged and him being their best on. So I think they might just let it go. But who knows? We'll, the coaches will do. Um Field two of these, Hoare, Caulfield, and Howes. Uh, it'd be Hoare and Howes for me, and I'd be benching Caulfield. Um, maybe I'll just keep pumping through these questions. You can let me know when these teams yep. I'll, refresh. I'll Considering the next opponent's GWS face in North and Eagles, is it worth biting the bullet for Tom Green? I think you can if you don't like the other 620k mids. Uh, but I personally haven't. I think I've still got LDU and Butters, um, which is where I'll be playing. Uh, Jordan or Fife, I would take Jordan over Fife just because of the injury history, but I've got both in my side at the moment. I've got Yet. Reckon he will go all right. What's your guys' thoughts? I don't know who Yet is. Oh, yo. Yes, I think he'll go all right. I wish he was in my side, but unfortunately he's not at the moment. Uh, yo, JD's still keen on LDU over Steel. I've got uh, both now in both formats. Do we worry about Martin being named a wing? Nope. Team sheets from uh, Scott Brother mean Jackal. <laughs> uh, wines or Took, I would be taking Wines. The port fixture, the price, the buy. Um, yep, I'd take Wines, even though I think Took will probably be okay. If He's one of those ones where if he didn't have a buy, he'd be in so many more teams for sure. Got Campbell mm-hmm. and O'Carroll. Uh, could the strat be to correct Campbell to Carroll after his price rise provided no other must-have corrections? Yeah, that sounds yeah. very reasonable. <laughs> yep. Anyone fade Reed, McCurch, and Williams? Bad to start for the two hundred. Oh, bad start for two hundred K flogs. Uh, I mean, well, <laughs> one's one scored so far. The rest, I think, jury's a bit out on, and I think Williams will still come good. Um, yeah, I think the bye week will actually help him. Two full games by. I expect him to come out looking pretty good after this, but we'll see. 
He's got uh, a wealth Rankin, of knowledge. Rankin or Flanders. I'm more sure that Flanders will be a keeper than Rankin, so I'd go there. But yeah, I can see with the buy and stuff why people, and especially with Sexton and Cadman being in some of our forward lines, why people would look at Rankin. Uh, any differing opinion there, Eno? Uh, no, no. Don't, I think George mentioned something about Rankin being in the non-contact group this week. Who knows how true that is, but Flanders anyway. Flanders, still haven't Flanders, upgraded, Flanders. updated these yeah, sites. I'm, it's disgraceful. I'm refreshing. <laughs> Lions, an optional go with Barry. I'd rather have Lions than Barry, but I've, I've got neither anyway, so I'm not really um, uh, committed into that. With Gibb, because injury thoughts on changing structure, moving a Rin Primo to defend a Primo to avoid two rookies on field. And uh, this is something you've been playing around with, or at least opening up some DPP so you can correct mm-hmm. Gibkiss to Carroll for those that don't have him. And for you, it opens up flexibility whether you take a defender rookie or a mid rookie. Not something yeah. I've done, but you're liking it. And I think it's because you like Tom Stewart, for example, as an option over some of the 620K guys. So you're you're not yeah, so really fussed I, about yeah which Primo you start. I, I didn't actually change anyone, like trade a Primo to another Primo. I just moved Dacos into the midfield. So... Got whore, uh, got rid of Burgess, who I had at F8, brought in Marty Hoare, who, which I'm still deciding if I stick with that uh, once we actually get the teams, and just put Nick Dacos in the midfield, right? So now I've got DPP where I can trade Gibkiss out. If I want to defend a rookie, will I just get a defender rookie? And if I want a mid-rookie, well, I can put Nick up there and get a mid-rookie. Or if I want a forward rookie, I can put Nick up, I can put Wilson up, and then get a forward rookie. So it's have a look at your team, see if that works. Um, but it's just, yeah it's nice to maybe have a bit of flexibility, but I will stress I'll only do this if I'm actually confident in Hall and picking Hall, but I guess I could still do Caulfield. Um, so, yeah, that's just a little thing. Uh, it's not super important, I wouldn't have thought, but it does open up. You know, I think we might have a couple of corrections, so it might not really matter. JD, you might you might be able to do yep. DPP anyway over a number of lines. Um, but uh, All right. So, have either me. of you go on a decent pod this season. It feels like a lot of teams are the same, same. And look, when we see eight teams for free playing actual AFL, I think that's going to happen because you've got prices built in. <laughs> you see roles. There's going to be convergence around a lot of players and then that dictates what's left. I honestly don't look at uh, ownership for my players. So I've got no idea who is the lowest owned. It might be Carol at 12%. I genuinely don't know if there's someone lower than that. It's the team as, as an overall unit that ends up being unique, not any, you know, individual player um, for the most part. So, uh, no, I haven't sought out a pod. I don't know if I've got a pod. Like, I assume, yeah. you know, some of these guys like Lions, Berry, Bonner are the types that would end up being pods. Yo, if I still had him, I know he's not very popular. But, like, yeah, I just don't, I haven't landed on anyone like Your that. Your overall 30 is a pod in itself, unless yeah. someone copies you. Uh, teams are out. Teams are out. Oh, yes. I mean, that's unfortunate what happens to George. Um, he gets complicated <laughs> a bit. So, so dogs, D's oh. first at the top. All right. Um, and T Mac is in. So, oh, think, Ben Brown is in over get, Fullerton. That's interesting. Get, just and then get the, the comment off the screen and we can see. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sorry. Oh, yeah. Um, yep. I'm a noob at this, by the way. I shouldn't be so. My, I think my first thing is I wanted to see T Mac in. So, for me, that. Look, the, the way I read it gives Hall. gives Hall good good job security as he's just yep. truly the um, Bowie replacement and T Max come in for Tomlinson. I've and seen for anyone fans say that's a joke, but I don't really know. Yeah, for um, anyone that's interested in Salem as well, this is also he's a positive. Playing midfield still, yeah, because it means he's playing midfield. He will be getting those. So Taj will be the sub most likely. Billings, or well, maybe it's Billings uh, still, and Taj gets a oh, game. But it's surely, one of those. there's no way. <laughs> It's got to be. It's got to be Woden. Uh, I mean, Woden's been good when he's played, but yeah, it's and then be yeah, Billings. Brown forward, T Mac defense, and Salem playing mid. So, yeah, that's yeah, a think, good. That gives us a read at least. I mean, I to be honest, I thought um, no Woden, no Brown, and that Fullerton would play. Laurie would be the, the yeah. sub, but hey. Who knows? Uh, and then on the dog side, um, <laughs> so I don't think there's anything too crazy there, other than McNeil, who's the sub, potentially being the sub. Van Daniel. Neal could be. <laughs> Yeah, Daniel could be actually. That's what we saw in the preseason as well. Uh, so, Buku, what's your thoughts? Because, I mean, O'Donnell's oh, yeah, not he's in. another another <laughs> forward option, right? I thought O'Donnell might play here, but I don't think he. I think he doesn't need to because what's these forwards line like yeah. Fritch and JVR? So, Buku and Jones can cover that. Uh, I think next week O'Donnell might play against the Suns taller forward line. Um, but what this says is, Buku, I mean. I don't know about O'Donnell and has he been injured or has he had any interruptions? Is that why he's not playing? But it seems to me like Buku's in the James no, O'Donnell first did choice. Have, 
injury in, interrupted okay, preseason. You call I'm, that. I'm fairly yeah. sure. Like, yeah, don't, so look, we don't start Buku, sure. but yeah. he might be one we correct. He's definitely high on, on the wait list. Um, and actually, we shouldn't skip over Hoare. So Hoare is in, I think, both of our sides now and on field yep. for me. Is he on field for you too? Yeah, he um, is. So yeah. yeah, decent confidence in him. Um, Caulfield's the one that I've dropped. So I've got like Howes, Hoare, Reed, and then Gibkiss is locked on my bench. The Caulfield's same. the yeah. one that I'm missing and I'll probably go Gibkiss to Caulfield next week if he looks good. But for the yeah. same reasons that you're a little bit worried about Karmas, so I think Caulfield might have some of the, the similar concerns as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. If they've got O'Donnell still to come in, depending on who they, they name as the sub here as well. So we'll just wait and see how this goes. Um, but He's probably had yeah. a bramble though, right? You would assume, yeah. but it's Bevo. Yeah. Um, an interesting thing is Harms is now the forgotten man. Like Fife and Jordan are definitely yeah. the two popular ones. Harms is somewhat gone, but I still have an eye on him because if some of these other guys don't work out, um, he's a potential correction uh, target for some of them as well. Okay. But yeah, yeah, much more confidence in Hoare, Salem uh, as a result of those teams. Yep. All right. Um, so Jace Burgoyne, who has been earmarked for a wing role, but oh, kind of butchered in the preseason, has not made the side, which is interesting. Um, uh, who is the sub then here? I guess it's either Evans or Mead. Evans, yeah, Mead. It's might probably be it's probably Evans. Um, Mead's one ninety nine k. So yeah. Um, Interesting. Okay, I mean, I don't think it affects our teams, but I guess watch Mead and if anyone was interested in Burgoyne, he's probably off your list. Well, he should definitely be off your list now, not probably. So, just is Drew playing wing there off the bench and then maybe a little bit of mid, but Mead might be truly the four. I mean... I think Mead ends uh, up getting pushed out of the rotation and they'll still have yeah. Drew in there. I mean, I'm not looking at him anyway, but yeah, go on. So just, yeah, it means Drew's like the fifth mid in that side. Yeah, it, yeah, not sure. Or could... Not sure. Uh, and then on the West Coast side, what have we got going on here? Not too much, really. I don't think it changes uh, anything. Uh, no. CJ won't be the sub, right? So it's Chesser or Edwards. I don't really know too much about Edwards. I don't know. I thought Dua was going to be from what uh, like Rhino was saying and seeing on Twitter. But he's emergency, so I don't know. Don't know. Okay. It's not really too much. <laughs> We and then there. Oscar McDonald, uh, which we knew last night, but Tintring and Sharp confirmed, which we knew from earlier today as well. Uh, the bench, it looks like it cut the three that we had, or the cut the couple that we thought in um, Brody and Reedy. Uh, so then just a question around whether Bainfield, Warner, Banfield. Erasmus, I think any of those three could reasonably end up being the sub. I think Banfield, I think they'll be unhappy for our fans that it's not Cooper, at least sub. But um, Cooper, Cooper's... Uh, that's what i'm bench. saying they'll be uncertain yeah, yeah. that he won't oh, be yeah, yeah. so um i think i'd like cox is playing young's playing erasmus is playing i think it's probably banfield but yeah so look don't worry about young cox is going to play that sort of really you know third forward and then don't worry yeah jackson if you like him if you if you i mean who do you believe in the media space of, of the big shrek timeline um yep are, are, you, are you considering it uh, no, nah, not for Supercoach. I, like, I think if he ends up being out, out eight weeks, I probably should have started him. But given that the timeline's we four and know. we go by yeah. the official more often than not as being accurate or at least roughly accurate, uh, I think, yeah, I'd probably fade Jackson for now, even though it'd be great cover for the Ruck buys. Yeah. yeah. I'm not going to begrudge um, anyone who's asking in the chat if you go either way, to be honest. I think this is a... Yeah. The tough I call. think it's Does a it better team? option Does in it... fantasy than super coach, but yeah, yeah. I, the yeah. other thing as well is like, could Reedy come in? Uh, if none of the three or forwards or... have particularly played well apart from a miss. So, like, you know, Treaky could have a bad game. And maybe Trace once Cox is fit, they yeah. put him back in defense, drop O'Mac, and then who knows. Yep. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think if their structure doesn't work out well, then that's probably the risk with Jackson, but that's a small risk. I, I think, yeah, probably more fantasy or if you want. Bolter than Supercoach. Uh, and then on the line side, probably no surprises there. I mean, I thought uh, Tunstall was maybe a chance to get a game, uh, but who ends up being the sub there? Probably Dev Rob, which they've done a fair bit in the past. Yeah. Could be... Could be Loman. I don't know. Probably no, Dev. Could, uh, yeah, could be, could be Loman. Could be Rob. Could be Answorth, maybe. Yeah, Answorth. They're the three. But I don't um, think it really affects us too much because Loman already had ruled himself out as a sub option. So, uh, sorry, as a rookie option. Yeah. All right. It's more It's more who plays more midfield. You know, Rainer's named in the guts there. 
Clark didn't get much last week, I don't think. So maybe he, he gets more. But yeah, super coach wise, not too much. I guess just Lions. If you want to go it, I think you can. It's like Jackson, what I said, you can go mm-hmm. it. Different reasons, but you can go it if you want. I don't think I don't have a strong opinion either way. Um, I think yeah. I'm considering Jackson still. Lions, I won't go. Just all right. The team. Determined to crush through like our 30 minutes okay. of questions of backlog. So we yep. might go light on the analysis and just start rapid firing answers uh, yep. just to see how much of it we can get through in the next 10 to 15. Would you rather Yo, Crouch, and McCurcher or Whore, Butters, and Lines? Uh, whole butters and lines, I think. Cool. For me. Uh, um, all right. What about D'Ambrosio. Also, what are your thoughts on D'Ambrosio's Hawks took Phillips out, leaving a defense? I, just, just I mean, they play, play yeah. different roles, but no, I'm not the Hawks, in, yeah. Hawks way better. Just to save the money. Yeah. Uh, Dill Stevens, I mean, he's playing wing for a poor side, so it's probably a no for me. As much as I like him as a player, I think he'll be good there. Uh, thoughts on Sarong. I was about to start Parrish uh, too, but he's not starting. Is Newcomb a good alternative to gamble on? Uh, I like Dacos, but I don't like the double buy. So wrong, I trust the most there. Yeah, uh, I mean, Dacos is the one I'd still be picking. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so wrong is probably the next best option. Uh, risky going either way or Thomas. Yep, I think so too. A Bonner or Jordan, it is Jordan for Jordan. me, especially given that um, Mitzbot's come at a premium at the moment. Sharp or yep. Warner, Sharp. Took or Steel. 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 Yeah, tough. But or a Caulfield. Uh, Hor, I think that's we're probably doing Hor for, for now, and yeah, both formats. But we're probably getting Caulfield next Gibby week. Give to cough, maybe. Yep. Um, who you guys BCC this week? Probably locking Bont into Butters personally. I think that's a great option, uh, Jörg. Uh, I'm probably going uh, Dacos into Bont though. Uh, I think because I've got Tommy Green, I'm going that way into Bont. Oh yeah, love that too. Uh, Bonner update. No. Uh, all right. Any thoughts on Dempsey? I would cover Dempsey, I think, pretty extensively so far, but one that we'll be keeping an eye on. I think Eno's got him in his side, so a bit of a fan. Mature age, played well in the preseason, any spot. Barrier Fife. Uh, once again, Fife, for the same reasons as Jordan. It's just I don't like forward rookies. There's lots of mids that I like. Yeah. Do you guys think Manor will be sub? I think we've got uh, that one on. Husweight is indeed out. And then do you think Dawson will regress this season? If so, why? Eno, will he regress? Yes or no? Uh, as a player, no, but as scoring, yeah, I could see possibility of it. So I'm sort of staying clear of all from at the minute and wait and see. But hey, it's Dawes. He, can, he has one of the biggest ceilings yep. in Super Coach. He could pop off at any time. And if I didn't own him, I'd hate to see it. <laughs> uh, I can see him it's going hard. either way, but uh, the downside case with Crouch coming back in and how he finished last year definitely exists. So, um, someone I'm going to monitor and jump on when the time is right. <laughs> Dempsey, we covered Wines or Martin. Uh, I'm back in my boy Martin. And by the way, it's like, oh, do you have any pods? <laughs> Martin was my pod back at 1% in the preseason. So you pick good players that don't become pods anymore. Uh, wines or Martin, Eno? Uh, wines for me, actually. I mean, look, the keeper the fixture, CBAs, possibly yep, thing good. is definitely a valid argument. Um, you know, if Nico goes well and his role's good and he's playing defensive, well, then he's going to be a possible keeper. For the season, whereas wines you'd probably imagine isn't, but I, yeah, mine's a bit cheaper. I love the early fixture. I think he can really, you know, butters coming off a little bit of an ankle. Maybe he, I just think he's going to be the number one mid wines to at least start the you know first month or so. So I'm happy to take that punt. Um, yep. But ideally both, if you like them both. Uh, Jackson or Heaney, we've both got Heaney, so I think that answers that one. Uh, Carol on the bench, outscoring Gibkiss and Williams on field. Good start to the year, lads. At least you've got Carol Brady. Like that's the big one there. Yeah, exactly. Everyone's in, is unfortunate. Many will have the other two, but not all. Not not that many of them will have uh, Carol. Can you rank Hawk, Caulfield, Lazaro, Burgess, and Sharp as rookies? I think you have them in the order. I would possibly rank them, maybe swapping Sharp and and Burgess. But I think uh, Eno is probably happy with the order as is, or even put Burgess above Lazaro. Maybe. Yeah, I think it's in a good order. Yeah. Hall for uh, sure. Uh, Roberts over McKercher this week, but that'll change going forward, no doubt. Oh, this is a tough one of those tough one twos with about ten names. So Bont Butters, Newcomb Martin, Bonner with Fife in the forward line, or Bont Newcomb Martin, Crouch Wines Bonner. Oh, when they repeat the same pl- uh, player as well, it just fries my brain. So uh, Butters, so Butters, yep, Butters is unique. Crouch is a unique. Wines is unique. Bonner's a unique. So I think it's. Butters, Bonner, and Fife and versus Crouch, Wines. No, so it's Butters and Fife versus oh. Crouch and Wines. Okay, Butters and Fife versus Crouch and Wines. I mean, 
I'd probably go the two value guys. Uh, if oh, he already has Martin as well. Oh. I really like wine, so I don't like so really, yeah, really like without wine. him. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe like, uh, like you, you, but the butters option has a keeper, so I'd probably lean towards that. But I'd find a way to get wines otherwise, if possible. Probably over Nuke, Nukem, who's in both of those, would be yeah, my tough one. Tip. All right, from Jack here, seven twenty-two k to fill two spots at the forward mid. Toying with Barry and Heaney, don't rate much else. Well, if you don't rate much else, then go with Barry and Heaney. Uh, I think you have landed on your right answer. I think that's there. fine. Yeah. Uh, Tom Emmett is a like rookie priced pod. I mean, yeah. Once again, I wouldn't pick players because they're pods. Uh, Emmett did finish off the year well for Freer, and they like him. He's you know well and truly locked into that side as a kind of small half forward type that's got um, decent scoring. Just given his price, probably not someone that I'm keen to start, but could see myself correcting into. If you're really hot on him, though, then go for it. Miss out in five, two with the... Ah, oh, sorry. Um, yeah, miss... Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was from the question before. Lazaro or Windsor? I think we're both Laz over Windsor. Yep. If you had to start it. Yep. Uh, so the answer to this is no, just because the job security for McRae is not great. He's going to see many vests this year. How is managed job security? Not great. Um, so once again, probably not someone I'm starting with. Very five for Bonner. It'd be five for me. I know. Oh man, I might even say Barry at this point, but not like You've five is the one that has the forward. Yeah. yeah, five has the forward eligibility, so it's probably him. Uh, thoughts on Max Holmes? I haven't really thought about him a ton. Just injury history. Got other um, good options in midfield. Just again, Someone this like year is crazy. Where than start. you know another any other year when there's not many options, we might be all oh, over Maxi Holmes. Yeah, but... for sure. <laughs> Just, just so many ahead, so could be yeah. good, but I'm not looking his way. Well, yeah, especially given that we like, cats are hard to get a read on. Um, second guessing Fife after JL's comment today. So for those that haven't heard, basically JL said, said that the he basically said that the Fife experiment's not dead, or like Fife forward experiment isn't dead. But to me, oh. like this makes sense. Like if they're going to rest Fife, he's going to rest forward, but. The role is for him to play CBA midfield this year. Um, all they said is that like some of their mids will need to have second positions they can play. So for Brayshaw, it may be wing. For Fife, it may be forward. I assume for Sarong, it may be forward. And for Young, it's back. But those four are still going to be their main CBA midfield. So it hasn't really changed how I feel about Fife. I would have been surprised if he didn't rest forward at all. Uh, Lazaro versus Sexton on field. It is a Sexton for me. Mm -hmm. uh, should I remove my enter? Uh, well, I probably shouldn't read this question. I'll get in trouble again. Um <laughs> Uh, I think if you could do so legally, which I'm not actually sure if it is legal anymore, then that would make sense from a potential upside perspective. But uh, if you've got Carol, then I think sticking with your team is probably a pretty good idea. Thoughts on Burgess for bench? Uh, it's definitely one Eno's considered. I think he's in the mix for guys that we may end up having to correct to. Yeah, yeah. But he's still a key forward and his job security is built on injury. So I don't love that as someone And built on start. beating Gollant this week or Gallant, yeah. whatever you say. So yeah. yeah, well, I'd wait on him now. Yep. Yeah. Um, so once again, Heaney over Jackson for us. I started short over Sheezel last minute and it's cooked me. Yeah. Sorry. It may not have cooked you. you I mean, never know. Yeah. Who knows never what happens know. with Sheezel, right? <laughs> one game. That's why I don't like going to Primo. You know, it's nice just to yeah. watch a rookie on the night one and just. Yeah. yeah. Cadman over Burgess for F8 for me. Um, both key forwards, but Cadman's got the very soft fixture and one price in his average already. So we're at least get to see that, um, that third game out of Cadman. And then if it ends up being the wrong choice, you can correct to Burgess. Yeah. Uh, well, I think we've talked about both Sharps, Job Security, and Karmas already. So let's consider those crossed off. Uh, thoughts on Steele over Dawson for money and flexibility? Yeah. I've not considered Dawson and I have considered Steele. So I think that's great. Mm -hmm. Um. Mate, uh, surf, 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 I don't surf's know. Oz. Um, oh, surf's Oz. Oh, <laughs> that's embarrassing. No one clip that, please. That is awful. Oh my gosh. Uh, yeah, I, many are in the same boat, and like this is going to happen tons throughout the year. It just unlucky, right. brother. You can't, can't predict injuries. Don't I think yourself I had up. <laughs> Miller last year, like you know, the people had nils that did well. It just, it just happens. Yeah. Yeah. It's from a rookie as well, right? Like the replacements that other people have may only score 20 points more. You just don't know. Yeah. Um, English plus Sharp or Cherry plus Hogan. Uh, Whoa. That is well, like hey. field. Uh, Anna. Just, go, just go all in, brother. Cherry Hogan. If you're yeah, thinking about it, just fun roll the dice, brother. Yo plus Bonner or Green plus Caulfield or Crouch plus D'Ambrosio. The one, two, three. I would be going LDU or Green and Caulfield. Agree. 
Going Captain Loophole with Dykes, my vice. Sounds very good. Will um, Burgess still play defense? Be a good scorer, even though his name is forward. He's playing forward, isn't he? Yep. He's a forward. He's a yep. forward and just replacing Thilthorpe's role straight up. Yep. So, yeah. Kicked bags in the twos last year and, uh, and did a ride as a relief ruck as well. Yep. Steel and two forward rooks on field or Bonner and one forward rook? I guess it's hard to say because we don't know who the rooks are and who the mid pricer is that you're bringing on, presumably. Um, but I'll go steel. Assuming the two forward rooks are Reed and Sexton, like, or like Sexton, Wilson and Sexton, yeah. then I'm I'm comfortable with that one. Yep. Uh, Reed or Hoare, I think it's a bit of a coin flip. Reed's got better job security. Hoare's probably got higher scoring potential um, in the in the long run. So I don't know. Maybe you you start Reed and then correct Hoare next week if you if have to. If you have to. Gibby, you can yep. get Hoare, You're going to get Reed back. Um, so yeah. Confused with the love for Cabman. What's the thought process behind him being a good rookie? Ah, it's just two soft matchups. Already got a decent score in his um, average. Playing relief uh, ruck as well. Looks bigger this year. So we're just looking for a spike score in the next two weeks. If we don't get it, you trade off him um, for a small price gain and you get to correct to one of these other rookies that we don't know if they'll be good. Burgess, Dempsey, um, any of the other like four or five we've had to Could cover Could be a mid-rook so as well if it, yeah. Wilson's in your mid. So, yeah. Uh, Lions and Lazar, McKercher and Berry. Kirch and Berry. Berry, yeah. yeah. Uh, LDU or Green? I've got LDU. I think, I know you've got Green. Yeah, so that's that's that. that doesn't help you at all. Just pick the one you like. <laughs> Best midfielder sub, 653 uh, to include Laird. Uh, so, um, I mean, yeah, it, it like... I assume you're trying to get towards the top of that price range. Otherwise, it's one of the value guys, I'd guess. Um, so for me, like LDU, uh, LDU Steel and Butters are like the only three I've really considered in that range. Uh, or if you don't have Dacos, I'd bring in Dacos and put him in your mid- midfield. Yep. Yeah, it's probably it. Uh, does Sheasel being named on ball make you guys nervous? Not so much for Supercoach, maybe more for Fantasy, because I think there's a chance uh, he doesn't get as much cheap ball. But Supercoach, as long as he's winning enough of the contested stuff and alongside Wardlaw and uh, LDU, we probably should be. I'm not that worried about it. Yeah. Uh, thoughts on Nick Martin? Yeah, I am haven't wavered off him for weeks. I'm just blinded hard by red and black. Into, into yeah. his, uh, I have toyed with, I have enough cash to go him to... Luke Jackson, so that's a decision I'll make in the next day. Um, currently got Jackson, but I was just toying with it. So, look, I still think Martin's a better pick. Long, you know, as I said before, comparing him to Wines could be a, you know, twenty-three round pick, long-term keeper for the whole season in this role. Um, so he's probably the better starting pick. All right, five minutes ago. Sorry, we're just doing the next five minutes, and then we're calling it uh, yep. time. So, Dean or Caulfield, mm-hmm. Caulfield, five for Jordan, Jordan. Five for Bonner. Five. And I feel feel free to speak up if I go against something. You, I would say the same thing. Marshall and Cheese was different to Gorn and LDU, though. Oh, probably Gorn and LDU, as JD would say. I might even say Marshall and Cheese So, yeah, yeah, I think we'd probably split on that yeah. one. Uh, no, we don't. Don't have worry about that. Now. Yeah, yeah. It's, he's playing halfback. Uh, Johan Heaney or Stuart and Jordan? Stu Jordan for me. Yep, I'd probably go Stu and Jordan too. But I like both options. Uh, is it okay to have butters and wines? Yes, there are people that are even toying with butters, wines, and Rosie for that <laughs> matchup. Like you could go all in. Yeah. Should I go butters to steal for fantasy? Uh, I, either way, I've been on butters all preseason, so I'm not tempted to change. But is he uh, that good in fantasy all... though? He's priced the same as butters and LDU in fantasy. Where in Supercoach, he's discounted by like 100k. So but just butters, I mean, isn't he not more of a oh, Supercoach pick? Yeah, I've got Rosie I, in I fantasy so. just to yeah. something different. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's it's fair. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you uh, either's fine. Lines and Holmes or Wines and McKercher. Wines and McKercher. Yep, same for me. But if you like Holmes, go for it. But if I just think go, yeah. is better than Lines anyway. Yeah. Cheers, boys. Uh, love the content. Well, thank you. Thanks. It's nice of you to say. Are you guys fading Jackson? Yes. Uh, Maybe not. Place to grab Steel. Mm. Uh, in my side, I think I got rid of Amon in fantasy to get Steel. Um, I still like Amon as a pick. I just, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I got nervous about Steel. There's a lot of good coaches on him. I still don't really see it, but I'm just like not confident enough that they're wrong for me to fade him. Uh, Pig, thanks for stopping by and saying hello. Looking forward to watching the game with you, hopefully, in a couple of weeks. Uh, yep, Zach Williams should be fine. Jay Short, yeah, covered short. 
All right. Uh, Reid or McKercher on field? Probably McKercher still just because <laughs> I'm pretty worried about Reid against Port. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Yep. Uh, no, pick two of McKercher, Lazaro, Windsor for M9F7. Kirch and Lazaro. Look, I feel like Dog and Windsor, we're Dog and Windsor so much. Uh, I actually think he could be a good player, but as far as starting, uh, what we know now, these the first two um, yep. have the possibility of being better. So I go them first. There's a very good chance Windsor does end up being better than Lazaro, <laughs> though. No yep, doubt. For sure. But yep. Yep. Uh, I've got Wilson on field over Reed this week. You know, you the same boat? Uh, that's Harley Reed. I've got Harley at the minute. Yep. But, there you go. Split yeah. again. Devin and Lyons is a follow interest me. Yeah, for sure. But with Neil to return then as well after the bye. Uh, what about Jackson now that Reedy's not playing? Ah, covered that one. Bonner, we've covered. Fife or Lazaro, I'd rather have Fife. Um, uh, no, neither of us are going Bonner. Not anymore. Not anymore. Backline of Fantasy, Dacos, Sheasel, Whitfield, Houston, Young, and Williams with Yo in the middle uh, when Williams has his bye. Is this good? Yeah, there's a lot of defenders there uh, and if you've got like a Martin or an Amon as well in that format you've probably overcooked on how many you've got um, so yeah I'd probably imagine that getting off one of those and uh, putting you into defense and using the money elsewhere would make more sense but hard to say without seeing the full side Brady bench one of Roberts McKercher Sexton or Sanders uh, so I would be benching McKercher of those yeah I think I agree reluctantly uh, we've done Heaney or Jackson. It's Heaney. Bonner or Fife. Fife. Houston or Sheasel. Sheasel. Yep. Uh, Buderick lost traction. He has unfortunately lost traction. Um, just couldn't get a good enough read on him from the Tigers game, uh, Carla, to know if he's actually going to end up having a good role because scoring's all over the place. I still think he's going to be ahead of sex in that pecking order and should return some decent money. But just with the buy uh, and some of the other options we've got now, I'm, I've cooled on him a little bit, but I still think he'll, you know, outperform his price this year. Martin or Steele? That is a tricky question. I'd still lean Martin. Uh, Eno? Yep. Yep. Thoughts on Libra as a pod? I think we discussed this a little bit already. We're both uh, not on the Libra train, but could see why it would work out. Uh, how many times has George changed his team in the past 48 hours? Uh, more times than there are hours. <laughs> oh, and some, and some. Reed to Hoare over Howes and grab Reed for Gibkiss next week. Yes. Yep. I think that makes sense to me. Yep. It's fine. Uh, oh, just tuned in, Jerry. What do we think about Sam Berry? I mean, neither of us are on him. I'd rather correct him than start him. I think is the too long didn't read. Uh, we're both Cadman over Manor. Do you think Young tags LDU next week? Um, do you think Young tags this year? I guess is a better question, Eno. Uh, how many times did he do it in the last six weeks last year? Was it once or twice? Once or twice. I mean, he's not I'm... like a full tagger, right, either. He's just a, you know, going to do more on this defensive, yeah, defensive yeah. role. And it it's probably bodes well for him, honestly. Tackle numbers shoot through, through the roof. Uh, to be and honest, he still like... should do some offensive stuff because they want to get yeah. in his hands. Uh, don't worry about it. If you're worrying about LDU, do you worry about it? Probably not. Oh, no. I mean, <laughs> the other thing is teams don't tend to tag in the early games of the year. We saw it a little mm. bit last year with Dacos and stuff. But for everyone else, they just want to play their own game plan. And in a matchup where you th where they will go in favoured and want to beat North, I think they're going to want to play their way rather than try and negate LDU. So, look, there's a chance that he stands next to him. Uh, and there's even a chance that if he gets off the chain, that he puts more work into him in the second half. But I'm not overly worried about tags this time of year. No. Uh, Rosie or Butters? I think I've got Butters and you've got Rosie, right? I do currently have Rosie, yeah, but that's a decision to be made later. Is that a pod? Oh, we might have a pod on our hands. Oh, Go I'm, going for a, I'm going for a pod for no reason. Uh, I like both, to be honest. <laughs> so it's a hard choice. Uh, so I don't see them like there being issues with having both on the same side. I just would rather have Bont than Libba. All right, I think we'll do five more questions and then we will call it a night, finish up our teams and get ready for the game. Uh, all right, I really like Lions. Do you think it would be all right to fade McKercher? And if he does, well, pick him up round three. I think you go the other way with that, right? I'd, yeah, I'd go the other way around. Yeah. I'd rather start McKercher and then pick up yeah. Lions off his buy if I need to. Yep. This is where I think there's more likely to be success. Better job security, Dempsey or Manor? Uh, Dempsey. 
yeah, yeah. his name on the uh, field, man. It looks like he was going to be sub. So could yeah. that change next week or two? Yes, but yeah, at this point, sure. that's the only way for we can answer that. Now. <laughs> yeah, and especially given preseason, Dempsey was played over Manor as well. Yeah, Mackenzie on field, Lazaro mm-hmm. and Wines, or Sharp, Sarong, and Wilson on field. Mackenzie on field is that a uh... like Ken Mackenzie? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Uh, so I think. Like I mean, Wilson. on field, the better team is the left, right? But you want Will? I th- I mean, he still has Wilson probably on the left side, doesn't he? Um, I guess so. Uh, the funny thing is, like, I want Wines and I want Wilson, and then, and then you the other finish off four. With I'm like, Maybe. whatever. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's hard these ones sometimes without seeing what it like the team and what it affects, but. I guess the other thing is, like, is Sharp on field? It's a bit hard to, like, tell from this because if Sharp's on field, I don't like that option. I don't know how Sharp's on field. Don't do that one. No, that's the best we can give. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. C-Mac, I don't know. What's the read on C-Mac? You know, just wing time, right? So Yeah, he'll play wing based on what we've seen in the structure. I don't think he'll get behind the ball as much. I'm not a huge fan of him um, anymore, unfortunately. Is it bad starting Robert Heaney, Grundy, and Dacos? No, I think they're all all across different lines. You'll be able to manage that by by fine. I've got those and Jordan, and I'm not sweating it at all. No. Poor Caulfield, Dean, pick two. Uh, The first two there, I wouldn't be taking Dean. Yeah, there's a chance he loses his spot uh, for sure. Uh, Stuart and Steele or Yo and LDU Green plus 100K in the bank? Well, um, Stuart and Steele. Yep. Yep. I can see that for sure. All right. And I think we will call it time there. So, Eno, thank you for joining me. Hour of power on a Friday night. We love that. Uh, Any last thoughts for our listeners and viewers before we say goodnight? Um. No, no, there isn't actually. Marty Hall wheels up. He's on my field at D6. So if you want to roll with that, know that I'm rolling with it as well. I think JD is as well. So if it goes well, it goes well. If it doesn't, we all go down together. But I think it looks good with that team. T-Mac in for Tomlinson, Hall in for Bowie. Uh, so you know, if T-Mac was to not perform, they can go straight back to Tomlinson. And I think Hall will hold his spot. So provided he plays well, uh, plays well, well of course. Um, maybe some fielding. Other fielding uh, questions, JD. Like, if you're fielding two defender rookies, who are you going? Reed and Hoare or like double Ds? Nah, Reed, Reed, or... Reed and Hoare. Reed and Hoare, Reed and Hoare just Hoare. for a bit of diversity, just in case Ds don't pan out well. But I could see Howes and, and Hoare and uh, not having, having Reed. Yep. Uh, um, midfield, I think, look, most our answer is like McKercher. If you're deciding between Sanders, McKercher, and um, who else? Roberts. Like, Roberts, Clark, yeah. Or... Like, Rob, yeah, Roberts. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. We'd be fielding. Uh, sorry, fielding Roberts and Sanders, and then McCurch third. McCurcher. I think probably. Yep. Clark's and then forward line, Cadman or Wilson. I think the forward line's the toughest one. If you had like a cat, like like me, who I have, um, mm. you know, an F six. It's a rookie. Is it Cadman? Is it Wilson? Or is it Dempsey? If I'm rolling with him, that's the harder one. Yeah, well, even Lazaro, but the matchups. Oh, going on yeah. This week, yeah. So I'm uh, going, all right. If I'm doing that, maybe Cadman is my. Yeah. You know, if you yep. up for risks. Uh, and yeah, final words to me. Thanks for joining and watching the content this preseason across all of the FT TV channels. Uh, your support is great and we appreciate it a lot. Good luck with your teams. And just remember, nothing is as good as it seems and nothing is as bad as it seems. So whether you have a great week or a poor week, uh, there's still lots Don't of time sweat. in the season to yeah bounce back. There's lots of people that have started out 40K and end up you know top 10 or winning the whole thing. So Um, Yeah, we're playing for the season from here on out. We've got 40 trades, a lot of moves to make, and we look forward to discussing all of that and so much more with you across the season. So, yeah, good luck, and we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.